Then we've got, of course, Georgia's splendid little war, the pursuit of empire, a war that we were led into on a blizzard of lies, a war of presidential choice, not a war of necessity, as we were told, a war that continues to cost hundreds of American lives and untold numbers of Iraqi lives, a war that is enriching Halliburton, Bechtel, and others of the corporate elite without costing a single one of those CEOs the lives of their children or their grandchildren because they don't put them at risk. It's become a war of infamy. <laughs> Brown and Root, back during the Vietnam period, now a subsidiary of Halliburton. Of course, Dick Cheney made his fortune at uh, Halliburton and extended Halliburton's fortune using his political connections uh, to extend his government contracts, and stood, including doing business with Saddam Hussein's government uh, back in the uh, 1990s. And uh, now Halliburton get, getting the no-bid contract uh, to go into uh, Iraq to help to do with the uh, nation building and occupation over there, including supplying of gasoline, gasoline to the Iraqis, uh, getting 700 $700 million so far, uh, not just from us U.S. taxpayers, but much of that money coming out of the United Nations Humanitarian Fund, a fund designed to provide humanitarian aid for the people of Iraq. And in case you might think that Halliburton is a humanitarian group, uh, it has instead been selling gasoline at $1.59 a gallon over there. Uh, which they say, well, yes, that's expensive, but uh, you know, w this is a hostile uh, area that we're having to deliver the gasoline in, but the Iraqi oil ministry itself is delivering gasoline also, from the, getting it from the same sources that Halliburton is getting it and selling it to the Iraqis for 98 cents a gallon. So that's uh, about a one-third uh, markup uh, for Halliburton uh, that allows them to gouge us uh, yet again. Uh, you know, they get the gold mine, we get the shaft. You know, that's pretty much uh, the way it's going over there. Let's be blunt. Uh, these people are nuts. I mean, absolutely bull goose loopy. And they're dangerous. George W. speaking to the National Security Council. I do not have to explain why I say things. It's the interesting thing about being president. I don't feel I owe anybody an explanation. I mean, what country does he think he's president of? Wouldn't you like to buy him for what he's worth and sell him for what he thinks he's worth? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to think that it was just about a power grab by the Bushites, but I've got to say, in all honesty, where's my party? the proud populist people's Democratic Party. I was elected, I come to you not as a virgin, I was elected in the state of Texas uh, to two terms on the Democratic ticket to statewide office and proud to have been so, much to the amusement of the people down there. <laughs> but now I look up at my national party and I see that they've taken off the old Sears Roebuck work boots and strapped on the same Gucci's and Poochies that the Republicans strut around in. <laughs> and they're taking the same money from those corporate interests that the Republicans do. And of course, if you accept those checks written on the back is the corporate agenda. And left out then is the workaday majority of the people, the working folks, the immigrants that we've heard about tonight, the family farmers, the old folks, the children, uh, the people who care about the pollution of our air and our water, about the purity of our food the very sovereignty of our nation being taken out from under us. Where the hell are the Democrats? Why are they not standing up to this? <laughs> Got a section in my book called The Wobbly Crats. They jelloed on us, <laughs> refusing to stand up to Bush Co. and the corporate kleptocrats. Tom Daschle. Democratic leader of the U.S. Senate, the sweet a guy as you ever want to know. I've known him since before he ran for political office, but also a softy. I mean, always has been. He was asked recently on Meet the Press why the Democrats offered no clear, bold alternative to Bush's giveaway to uh, his wealthy contributors. And uh, Daschle said, and I quote, well, 
we, you got to take one step at a time. And I thought, is this an AA program? <laughs> Notice that the other side is not taking one step at a time. <laughs> They're taking great galloping kangaroo, kangaroo leaps over us. Well, it's in these moments that America's grassroots people matter the most. And it's in these moments that most often the grassroots people rise to the challenge. And just about every place that's got a zip code where I've been, I find that there's somebody or some group of somebodies that are lighting little prairie fires of rebellion against this economic and political exclusion that the thieves and high placers are trying to shove down upon our heads. It is so inspiring. It is so encouraging. It is so positive about what is the very best of America. I tell the story in the book about a woman named Kathleen Lewis uh, who took on Walmart. Now, this is the largest corporation in the world now. It's bigger than ExxonMobil. It is bigger than General Motors. Uh, it is the biggest uh, employer in our country, ne nearly a million people working for it. Uh, it is uh, it, 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 the, the typical, it is the biggest suppressor of wages and middle class opportunities in our country and throughout the world. Walmart associates, as they like to refer to them, uh, average $15,000 a year in pay. That's if they get to work full time, but they define full time as 28 hours a week, so you don't even get full time wage. You don't even get to 15,000, get a poverty wage. Uh, it, it is a company with no health care benefits, uh, no upward mobility. It is the biggest discriminator against women in the country. 78% of its employees are women, yet almost none of its senior management women. You reach that glass ceiling and they ask you to Windex it you know, and then go out the back door. Uh, it is a sucker of economic vitality out of our communities. It comes in and sucks the life out. It doesn't bank locally. It doesn't buy local, any of its supplies locally. It doesn't uh, do its advertising locally. It siphons money out of our communities. Off to Bentonville, Arkansas. Of the ten wealthiest people in the world, Five are Waltons, the founding family of Walmart. That's who's taking the money out of our communities. So Kathleen Lewis in Glendale, Arizona, that's a suburb of Phoenix, not exactly a hotbed of left-wing activism. <laughs> Kathleen Lewis, a Republican, a conservative, a businesswoman, woke up one morning and found, hello, Walmart's going to move next door to her with a super center. And she refused to be rolled over for this. And she got to talking to her church members and to her family members, her neighbors. And they were outraged as well. Nobody had consulted them. And then she got to talking to the United Food and Commercial Workers Union, Local 99 in Arizona. And then they got to talking to the environmental groups. And they got to talking to the uh, independent stores in Glendale, Arizona. And they launched the Glendale Rebellion, the international global world headquarters of which was in Kathleen Lewis's beauty parlor in Glendale, Arizona. And to make this long story short, despite Walmart pouring in hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, support a referendum that it had demanded in this local community, the people of Glendale, Arizona refused to be Walmarted by a vote of 60 to 40. They beat Walmart in Glendale, Arizona. And that would be one sweet story, but uh, I've got a list in my book, a two-page spread of 170 communities that in the last few years who have defeated Walmart and the big box bullies who try to come into our communities. We can, it's our community. And in every one of these cases, the exact correct question is being asked by the community people. Whose town is it? Is it ours? Or does it belong to Bentonville? Who decides what kind of town we want? The corporate powers don't rule. We rule. We're the sovereigns. What is happening all across the country? Students rising up and saying, no, we don't want our, uh, our sweatshirts and our uh, t-shirts and our frisbees and gimme caps and et cetera to bear the logos of uh, Reebok and uh, Nike and et cetera that are made in sweatshop conditions with children younger than we are.